What was really exciting about One Port Street when we were first asked to look at the site was that it was a very urban situation. The idea was to create a singular tower, maybe just set back off Great Anchor Street and Port Street, but then to use the accommodation, you know, seven, eight and nine storey buildings around the edge that very much locked the building into the context of the old warehouses. So instead of it being immediately onto the street, the building sits back and in doing that, we're able to create a really beautiful public space to the south. And the idea of picking out some balconies within the perimeter buildings with the white uh, brickwork just gives it relief and just makes it a little bit more distinctive from anything else in the area. We are really trying to push the boundaries of what we've done before. We've taken on board a lot of feedback that we've had from our existing residents and trying to design those factors in, what people want, what they want to see. With the interior, we took a lot of influence from Manchester's history, its industrial past. We looked at the site in great detail. There were a lot of really interesting facts that we pulled out of that that really influenced the palette that we selected. So we ended up going along the lines of um, picking natural stones, timbers, marbles, um, clean metals. We didn't want to just look at the palette of that specific site. We wanted to look at it in a wider context. So the inspiration of the Northern Quarter, but sort of pull that back a little bit, redefine it and create more of a polished, finished feel to the actual palette that we used. The seventh floor of One Port Street is our Paganini's branded amenity space for residents. And this is based on Paganini's, which was in the 19th century pub that was on the site. So again, we've taken that influence and used that within our buildings and the naming of our residential spaces. Key features within One Port Street are probably the amount and the quality of the amenity space that we've got. So we've got lots of different spaces. We've got a gym, we've got a pool and a wellness centre. We've got lots of work lounges where you can set up for the day. You can work from the amenity space as opposed to being within your apartment. Uh, and there's lounges to relax and socialise with your friends. On the level seven, we've got an external terrace which overlooks our internal courtyard. Uh, and again, there's, there's internal space up there to work, relax and socialise. So we've got some really great amenity space within the building. There's lots of milestones. It's a big project, it's complex. We've got a great contractor on board with Renica and we are making some great progress on site. Our initial planning submission uh, assessed that we would be creating at least 60 new jobs and around £28 million worth of economic value just through the construction phase. I think that's a conservative estimate. It will end up being a lot more than that. Already in the Northern Quarter and, and Ancoats and around there, you've got that juxtaposition between historic industrial buildings, innovative new styles of construction, buildings from almost every period of architecture, fine examples that all come together. And when you walk around the city, that's almost what gives it the vibe and the feeling that makes it somewhere that people want to live. People won't just be living there, they'll be working there, they'll be meeting other people there. And it's really an opportunity to dip into the city, but also to move back into a place called home and one port street plays its part it's a brownfield site used for car parking that's now going to be an amazing asset for both manchester and the people that live there the neighborhood and the city as a whole will continue to develop around us the city won't be the same in 20 years time as it is today that's what brings cities to life that constant evolution of building types architectural styles uses and of course the community of people that live there and work there. It's about bringing those sites back into the city centre again and giving them a real benefit and use and in doing that we get that critical mass that will allow us to be a creative, exciting city with a buzz and vibrancy where people are living, working and playing all in the same place together and I think that to me is the true definition of a sustainable community.